lot of people ask me this question like all the time. Like that's a, why don't you do team building videos, team building guides, how do you build your teams? And to most people, I usually say, well, normally we only do team building sessions in the Patreon, which I'll link right here. Um, those are done through like our one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions in Patreon in the max tier where we get together with someone. I ask them a bunch of questions about their own play styles, Pokemon they, they like, and then we build them a team like based off of the things that they like. That we do that pretty much every single session for uh, coaching on Patreon to get people, you know, even if they're not going to use the team that much, just get them invested in learning more about EVs, learning more about item choices and how different Pokemon flow together. And I lead the people through the talk. Uh, I don't just say, here's your six, go for it. I lead them through the talk by weaving in, what do you think would work here? What do you think would work here? I hear their options and I say, well, actually, that's a great option. We can work around that in the future, but you'd be better off going with this Pokemon or this moveset for this situation. And then I explain the reasons why. So we always come out with a completely different team than uh, any other team I've ever built before because every single team is tailor-made for the person I'm coaching. Um, this The team we're gonna be working on today basically isn't like a team that's built for a patreon it's not built for anyone it's going to be built around a pokemon that i want to use and uh that little pokemon here is gonna be gengar i like gengar gen one best of fun i like gengar i feel like we should see more gengar we see a lot of spectre we see a lot of dragapult people have kind of stopped using gengar in like every form of competitive play especially because like urshvi dark is so good but I think Gengar actually can bring a lot to it to the table, and so I want to build a team because I want to use Gengar because I also want to make a video featuring Gengar that has Gengar's awesome thumbnail in it. So we're going to be building around Gengar today, and I'm going to be showing you guys how I build teams personally. Personally, how I build teams is going to show you all the steps that I take, uh, and the first step is just as easy as picking a Pokemon. It's not that hard. So I've picked Gengar. Is it G-Max Gengar? See, that's the thing. You don't have to do anything else other than just pick a Pokemon. You don't have to pick a moveset. You don't have to pick a nature. You don't have to pick items. You just got to pick one Pokemon to start things off. There's a lot of Pokemon. You can open up a Pokedex. What I usually like to do to pick a Pokemon is if I didn't have one chosen, I would just open up my boxes. Uh, I would take an empty box and I would put Pokemon into those empty boxes, right? That's, uh, you know, I might want to use. Maybe I want to use Archeops. Maybe I want to use Lapras. And then from there, I start finding synergies between them. But since I already have the Pokemon that I want to use, it's going to be Gengar. So I don't have to pick if it's G-Max, I don't have to pick anything. I just know that I like Gengar. And what comes with Gengar is the defensive typing of Ghost Poison, which is really, really nice. It's obviously linked to things like other ghosts and Psychic uh, and Dark, but, you know, it resi it's new fighting can't hit it, right? Normal attacks can't hit it. It resists Fairy, so it's a great partner for dragons on the team. And uh, I just think Gengar can bring a lot to the table. I think it's very similar to a Spectrier, where Spectrier is already outspeeding almost everything that it wants to. It's already outspeeding base 100s, which is great. It struggles a little bit versus Thundies, but like, it's already outspeeding like Landos and things like that. So Gengar's in the same speed tier, and Gengar gets ice coverage moves if it needs it, gets other forms of speed control. The reason Spectrier fails short sometimes, even within sweeper sets, is that it doesn't really have other additional stab moves or other additional moves. It can go for like, you know, the big shadow balls, but against normal types, you can't really do anything. Like Gengar is great because it's also really good at pinning like things like Tapu Fini. So I think it's gonna be really, really good Pokemon to build around. So what uh, Pokemon give Gengar problems? That's the next thing you wanna think of. Now that you have a Pokemon, let's start thinking of Pokemon we can add to not only complement Gengar, um, but cover up for some of Gengar's weaker matchups. I'd say Gengar is probably one of its weaker matchups or really big normal types. Uh, I think another really big thing it's weak against is Urshifu. So I'm thinking maybe like a fighting type Pokemon might be a really good one here. And also Gengar is a little bit weak to Incineroar. So we need to, we need not only a fighting type, but we need a fighting type that is pretty good versus Incineroar. See, so you're going ahead of yourself. Just like uh, you asked, like, is it G-Max Gengar? You're saying, what are the best EV spreads for Gengar? Doesn't work like that. Every single team is built all the EVs are built to suit the team. There are no best EV spreads. Everything needs to be made exclusively for the situation. So you don't need to be adding like all these perfect EV spreads from other teams because those teams, those EVs are all team specific. We'll make our own EVs. See, Feramosa can't take a hit, but the thing is like you'll get fake out of them Feramosa. So I'm thinking we need an inner focus fighting type. I have a perfect idea. An inner focus fighting type that can pin not only Incineroar, but also Urshifu. What do you guys think it is? What do you think it is? I'm almost there. Lucario is going to be my choice. And we're just going to use this Lucario as a placeholder. Don't even know what it's set is. Cool, it's already in your focus. So, now we have these two. 
We have Gengar. We have Lucario. We're starting to build a little bit of a fighting weakness, but we can deal with that with the rest of our team building. I think Lucario is a great option here. It provides like uh, steel coverage. Uh, that's kind of something that Gengar doesn't really want to deal with. Um, it provides big that big fighting coverage, that big inner focus. This is great for things like Porygon 2 and more importantly, Incineroar. Um, I think another really cool thing that goes synergistic with these two guys is if I wanted to use like a sludge wave with Gengar and hit all the Pokemon, even my teammate, Lucario would be able to avoid that damage um, because of its steel typing. I could also go for like a max Gengar. I could go for like a G max Phantasm uh, and lower the defense with my faster Gengar, which would enable my Lucario to use a really, really big close combat to start like doing that big damage. So, like, let's say they lead like Porygon 2 and like literally anything else. I hit the other anything else with a Gengar Phantasm, lowers the defense on the Porygon 2, and then you can one shot the Porygon with a close combat. So, it's things like that, like different lead combos that you want to be looking for when you're starting to build your cores. You're saying, what about ground weakness? We have six Pokemon to build around. Like, you, you guys are getting... I really think that when people build around team building, when they think about team building, they get way in their head. We have to cover this. We have to cover this. We have to cover this. Take it one Mon at a time. Just one Mon at a time and play to those Mon's strengths. The things that cover up weaknesses like that can be done at the end. That's what your move sets and your items are for. I can build a team full of six Pokemon that are weak to ground and still beat Landorus if I use the correct items. Uh, use the correct move choices like it's not even about ground weakness it's about what is using that ground attack is it a landorus gengar can get icy wind i can calc and gengar with a life orb or even maybe a choice specs big so icy wind can take out lando so it's not just about ground weakness you got to think about what's using it and if that's even a threat because if lando is what we're afraid of remember how i said we were kind of gonna be building a rain team i don't give a shit about lando if i'm building a rain team right so, like I said, we're going to be building a rain team. I have a loose idea for this team. It's a very, very loose idea. It's not something I've already planned out. It's just very loose. So, um, yeah, I said we're going to be building rain. And so, ground weakness. People are talking about ground weakness. I'll show you guys one of the answers to ground weakness. Hopefully, you guys are having a good time. If you guys are having a good time, think about letting me know. All right. Pelipper. Answer to ground weakness confirmed. Don't look at the moves. Don't look at the nature. Don't look at anything. So now, we have a Pokemon that can switch in on said ground weakness. Um, we've added, uh, you know, a rock weakness that Lucario can resist. We've added an electric weakness that Lucario and Gengar can't really deal with. Um, but, you know, maybe I want to use, like, a Vest of Lucario. Put some points in Special D. Think about what's using Thunderbolt. Think if I can switch in on two or three Thunderbolts from a maybe not stabbed mom. Maybe that's not a problem. You know, stuff like that. So, yeah, Pelipper. Great weather setter. Uh, I think Pelipper is a great choice for this team. Personally, I love these kind of bit streams. You're happy to hear it. Go to the next Pokemon. Pelipper is pretty awesome, but there's another Pokemon that you kind of have to run if you're running rain. And it's one of my absolute favorites. And I think it goes really, really well with this team. Maybe you've heard of it. It's called Kingdra. And like I said, this is how I personally build my teams. We haven't even started building yet. I'm just showing you how we figure out what six we use, and then we're gonna get into the good stuff. Don't even look at the moves, doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter. So yeah, Kingdra. Like I said at the very start of this. Gengar is poison type, and it covers up for the things that Kingdra are weak against, those big fairies. Like, the big thing that uh, walls Kingdra, like, 90% of the time, is Feeny. Feeny just takes whatever you're using with your Kingdra and grinds it to a halt. Gengar is a Pokemon that is exclusively... Like, we're using Gengar on purpose to deal with Tapu Feeny. So, those big stab sludge bombs, that's going right for those Feenies, and it's going to be amazing. You're already hyped from using this team next week. Yo, it's going to be fun. We're going to make a rental code for it too, probably. So yeah, they help each other for coverage. Yep. And uh, I think it's just a great mon. So we have two slots left. And so this is going to be our core. Usually you take the first three to four slots. You make that your core. And then you fill the last two slots of team building with things to cover up for weaker matchups. And I think the biggest weakness we have right now is, yes, we have Pelipper for Tailwind. Yes, we have uh, you know Pelipper to set the rain for Kingdra. But I think we need a more consistent way to be aggressive with our speed control. Gengar can be really good, but I don't want to get outsped by Lando if they're like Scarf or if they already have an Airstream. Um, same thing, Lucario can get outsped by Lando because it's uh, one base speed slower. So I'd rather have a more consistent way of having speed control. And like I said, this is going to be a best of one team uh, just because like I plan on taking this on the battle spot ladder. So it's not, I'm not playing this in like a you know best of three format. And they're, they're not like when you're building teams, 
you want to be building the team for the exact format you're playing. Whether you're playing VGC, be sure if you're playing it like in a best of one ladder, build it for a best of one ladder. If you're playing it in a best of three victory road tournament or a regional, build it for that. If you're playing showdown, you know, build it for the exact OU, UU, whatever tier you're doing. That's really, really important. So since we're playing best of one, we're not going to be super meme -y. Like, we're probably not using eject button. But uh, we're going to use Whimsicott. I think Whimsicott adds a lot to the table. Um, you notice that Lucario and Whimsicott right here are both weak to fire. There's two fire weaknesses on the team. But the fact that we have Pelipper setting rain, Kingdra being able to reset rain through use of Max Geyser and things like that, it makes sure our fire weakness isn't as pronounced. So it's really, really nice. Uh, Whimsicott also adds with it like an ice weakness. Uh, a steel weakness that we resist with our Lucario on both sides. And also, remember, I just want to throw something out here. Guys, what does it look like we're doing? What does this look like it does? What are they, they going to respect in the team preview? If they want to open up with, like, follow me and trick room, we're going to be able to super punish that off our lead or literally follow me anything because uh, they need to stop the justified beat up, which, remember, we're not even beat up. We're inner focus, right? So it's in their head. We're in their head already, right? Which we're not doing the beat up. But they have to respect it. They are forced to respect this in the team preview, otherwise they lose. So just by having these mons in our team, it'll force opponents to do one of two things. It'll force them to play follow me or reactive or lead fake outs. All three of those things, we want them to do. And we're conditioning them into doing those things. Um, or, you know, they can lead with something that's a higher base speed than Lucario and try to KO the Lucario the turn that I max. Remember when I played someone the other day where I maxed my Zorark and like had it disguised as like Celesteel or something? and I like max flared one of their Pokemon on the first turn and picked up the KO on the Lucario, the turn they went for the beat up. That's the other way to beat this. You lead like Lando or something that's faster than the Lucario base uh, or like a Charizard or something. You try to just KO the Lucario before uh, they can go for Tailwind and that uh, big beat up play. So, and the thing is we're tunneling them into this. If they want to go for like a Charizard lead, cool, I'll just leave Pelper Kingdra or even just like Kingdra Lucario and be able to choose which way I want to go from there. You think I need a fire type on my team? I want you to tell me why you think I need that. What do I need a fire type for? Tell me, tell me what I need a fire type for. And I'll tell you why I don't. Ferrothorn? I have a Lucario. I have a Pelipper. Uh, those are two really good mons. I, I have Encore potential on Whimsicott. Gengar is great against those things. If you think you need a fire type to do with Metagross, I have a Gengar. <laughs> I have a Lucario, right? So, there's a fire type will be handicapped by rain. Yes, you do not need a fire type. Fire type would be poo poo here. Fire type would be very not great. There is one more thing that I would like to add to this team, which we'll add in just a second. But fire types are not needed. Because remember, you don't need a fire type. You have to think about what Pokemon are taking fire type damage that are a problem. You're thinking of adding Venusaur here. No, we don't need another grass type. We already have one. Special Lucario? No, no. It's not it's not gonna be it's not gonna be special. It's gonna be inner focus physical. You can't just throw Torkoal in here. <laughs> but yeah, you don't you don't need fire types here. How's it going, Cobra Bells? The last Pokemon we're gonna add here is gonna be so you don't need an electric type either here. Like what are we hitting what do we need an electric type for? I want you to tell me. I want you to tell me what type of Pokemon are we needing to hit for electric damage. That's the one thing I want you guys to get out of this. What Pokemon needs to take electric damage? It's not about Thunder. Who cares about Thunder? Like, why, why is Thunder a thing? Why do we need to use Thunder? What are we hitting? Think about it. I want you guys to think about it, and I'll tell you guys why we're fine. I'm not trying to trick you guys. I'm not trying to be a jerk here. But what are you hitting? Tapu Fini? I have Gengar. I have Whimsicott. Whimsicott can pack that big Giga Drain. Two shots Fini and get your Sash back right? Water types. We have Gengar. Great versus those things. Like, what water types, though? Like, what are they? What are the water? Are they Lapras? You mean the thing I can one-shot with my Lucario? Ground type. We don't need a ground type either. Because we can switch in our Whimsicott on that slot. And also, like, you think about it. You just think about it. It's, it's good things to think about here. What we really need in this last spot, because we're playing such an aggressive team, we need a way to maintain control, right? See, Glory and Moltres isn't adding anything to the team. We need a way to maintain our control. Because right off the bat in the team preview, we have control. No matter what team we're playing against, we're playing Rain with multiple Tailwind Setters, Inner Focus, and Ghosts. We're dictating what's happening. We need a way to maintain control. So that means, like, like let's say, for example, we're playing against Tranzar, right? And, uh... I lead Pelipper Kingdra, and they lead with the T-Tar, ah, and their, and their T-Tar underspeeds our Pelipper. We lose our sand, sorry, we lose our rain, they get sand, and then we lose, right? That's going to happen, you know? Let's say we lead versus Lily Cole, and we lead with Pelipper. Even if we want to switch in our Pelipper, if they just save their Torkoal, they're fine. So what we need here is a way, we, we don't need an Imprisoned Trick Room on. We need a Politoed, so we can maintain that we have more water types 
than they do. We have more rain setters than they do. And it's going to be a specific type of polytoad set. We don't need taunt. Those are all good options, by the way. Everything everyone's saying, like uh, taunt and things like that, um, follow me. Those are great. Those are normally great. But this team is going to be run a little bit differently. We want double We want double setters here. Not, not polyworld one, though. Polyworld is dope, though. Politoed. And it's going to be a very different Politoed from the sets you guys are used to seeing. Not this one. Don't look at this. So. So this covers up for all of the bad matchups now. This covers up for all of the Weather Wars. We've just won. Uh, I can lead Kingdra and a Weather Setter. If they don't have a Weather Setter on the board, I can just switch in my Weather Setter. Because they're going to have to switch it in to take away the Weather that I already have. Does that make sense? It's not going to be Parish Song. I have all the EVs that we're rebuilding. Uh, well, not all the EVs, but I have all the... This was the as far as I got in the rough draft. We're not doing Parish Trap. We're not. We're not doing Parish Trap. I'll, I'll talk about it in a sec. But basically, having multiple other setters is great here. Uh, the only thing that could almost be an issue is having the big electric types. But like I said, we can make Lucario a little bit bulky. Kingdra takes neutral damage, and Whimscott does resist it. So we actually have enough coverage to not really have a problem with electric types here. I rank setters offensive take advantage of each other. Yes. Not Specs Toe, but we'll talk about it. Yeah, you got to think about it. You got to think about what you're hitting and what's hitting you. You don't just think of like ground, thunder, electric, fire, water. That's like, no, what fire type? What ground type? What ground attack? Who's using it? The meta is important to take into account when doing all this stuff. Interesting what you do with this team against like Weezing. Well, we can talk about that. Um, the, the good thing about the Weezing, first of all, is like, what, is, what the fuck did Weezing do to us, right? Like, if I were to lead, like, if, like, all right, first of all, against like Weezing Gigas, right? That's what you're talking about. I can just go Whimscott Lucario. I'm faster than the Gigas because Whimscott has a 116 base speed. I can tailwind to make Lucario faster than the Gigas, and I can just chunk the Gigas. Uh, if we get the KO, we get the KO. If we don't, don't doesn't matter. Um, they're probably gonna, they're gonna have to go after the Lucario that turn. Next turn, Whimscott could probably finish it off. If we go heavy special attack build, or we can just bring in our Gengar or our Kingdra, get an Airstream boost, finish off the Gigas. Their Max is down. Their Gigas is down. They have a useless house wheezing on the board, and we're sitting up with three turns left on our Maximon. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Well, I can grab Monkey Beastful. See, like, the thing is, what is using an electric attack? I, I want you to tell me what's using it. And it's not a problem, right? Is it Zapdos? Why do I care about Zapdos? You know, is it Raichu? I don't care about Raichu. What's that link for coverage? It's on the Maryland team builder. It's right here. Yo, is that a, is that a hype train? Yo, we take those. Thank you for the sub. Starting out that hype train, yo. IR Flynn 87, thank you so much. Yeah, you gotta think about it. You always gotta think about the mom that's doing it. Because it's not the it's not the electric attack that requires checking. Like, just throwing a lightning rod mon on there doesn't solve the problem of like Zapdos, right? Because what you need to do is not not think you're thinking of like the problem and not as much the how you should find out a solution for it. Because Zapdos is a lot more. Then, like if I had an air, if I had a lightning round mon, he would just use airstream, or he would just use max flare to reset the rain, you know. So like it'd be much better to th think of instead of using like a lightning rod mon to stop Zapdos, use a mon that just stops the Zapdos, like Kingdra. Kingdra stops it. <laughs> uh, Lucario can also get uh, moves that uh, tech check Zapdos as well. This is the sort of stuff that you get if you were to join the Patreon um, and get like a one-on-one -on -one coaching session. We build you teams from scratch based around teams that you want to use. So. Let's get back into it. So uh, what I'm using right here is the Maryland team builder. And basically the only reason we're using this is because it shows all your weaknesses, your common weaknesses. People talk about like, oh man, we need a lightning rod to stop electric attacks. No, we don't really. We're only too weak. Anytime you're having more than three weaknesses in this little category right here, that's when it's a problem. See, as long as you're covering it up with like roughly the same number, like if we had two electric weaknesses and uh, zero electric resist, we might have a problem. Uh, if we had, see like, for fire weaknesses, we don't care that we're weak against fire because we have a rain to set to get rid of it. And three resists. It doesn't matter that we have two ground weaknesses because we have two ground resists and one of them's a nullification. So it's pretty important, I think, for especially for newer players to run all of their teams through a team builder. You're going to realize like, oh, I didn't realize I had three fairy weaknesses. Maybe I want to change one of my items for like a Roselli Berry or change one of my Pokemon to better cover up for that. And I still use this to this day. So I think it's still pretty so important. Here's our team. We were just talking about it. And uh, I've plugged it into Showdown, where we're going to start working on our EVs and our movesets. And I would say the number one thing you should be trying to do right now, a lot of people are saying, like, what are the best EV spreads? What are the best items? What are the best movesets? You want to work on that once you figure out 
the moves that you want. Right now, we've done a really good job about talking about the situations and the type coverage that we want for the team. Now we're gonna start filling out the moves, then maybe the items, then we're gonna start working on a little bit of EVs. We're gonna open up a damage calculator to find out just how many points we need in all these Pokemon to hit the damage thresholds that we want. So starting off with Gengar, a lot of people are saying that's this team super weak to TR. <laughs> which I would agree. And uh, one of the cool things that Gengar gets that things like Spectrier and you know Dragapult don't as ghost types is access to Imprison. And I think this is what makes Gengar like a really, really cool mon right now is it's a relatively underrated Imprison mon. You know, most people when they think of, uh, when, they, when they think of like Imprison things, they think of like Chandelure using Imprison Trick Room. I don't want to put a Chandelure in this team. I don't, need, I don't want a Fire type. I think Gengar having Poison type makes it a better switch in for Kingdra to mitigate fairy damage while also pinning Feenies. So I really do like uh, Gengar as an Imprison Trick Room mod. Uh, I also think that, uh, of course, we're going to run Shadow Ball. I also think there's a great uh, like talk to have about running Sludge Wave here. Maybe we will run it if we need it, but it can be paired with Lucario. And these guys are such a good lead. I really do like the Gengar here, though, so I think we're gonna go with uh, I think we're gonna go with a Sludge Bomb here just to start it off. But like this thing gets access to Icy Wind, Thunderbolt, bunch of cool stuff. We can totally change all these. And again, you don't need to look at your uh, at your EVs or your items or anything just yet. Let's go to Lucario. So like I said, Lucario is gonna be built with um, Inner Focus. We're not gonna be using um, you know Beat Up Justified, but we want to organize our team preview, which we'll talk about that at the very end to make it look like we are right. Um, so I do think the number uno move that we want on the Lucario is some sort of protect probably just because it's going to be pretty important. I think we're going to have close combat for sure. And remember, the reason we're using Lucario is because we want something that is unaffected by Intimidate and unaffected by Fake Out. Those two things make Lucario absolutely amazing. Uh, Lucario doesn't get Iron Head, but it does get Meteor Mash. And I'm thinking this last spot, I'm actually thinking it's just going to be Extreme Speed. And as weird as this sounds, this is actually just going to be used to be Max Strike for Speed Control. Like that's pretty much what it's there for, for additional Speed Control as well as like finishing off like Sash, Urshifu's and things like that. I think it's a pretty cool set. Uh, you know, if we want to put Ice Punch on to better deal with Lando, we can talk about that if we have to. Uh, we can totally put like four or five other moves that are really good, but I really like this set. I think it provides exactly what we need. And uh, you don't have to make the perfect set on your first attempt. That's what the calcs are for. You go through and run all your calcs and change everything, but you want to get a general idea of what you want. And there has to be reasons, right? There has to be reasons. Like I want this close combat to deal with Porygons, Urshifus, and Incineroars. I want Meteor Mash because it's a secondary amazing stab move that lets me hit um, fairies and other Pokemon that might somewhat give this team a little bit of problems while also giving me a max steel spike boost on my Pokemon that are relatively frail just to get them out of range of other mons that are calc just to take them out. So I think Meteor Mash is good. Maybe I cut Meteor Mash for Ice Punch and just force them to respect that option. It's definitely worth talking about. I talked about the reason for having extreme speed to break sashes, revenge KO things, and have that speed control and protect. Like every one of your moves, you have to have a reason why. And the reason can't be, oh, just because that's what Picolytic said. You have to know the reason, and that's super important. So going against Pelipper. Pelper busted, one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. I'm really gonna write, like to rock the protect here, um, and I all, I do think that Tailwind is great on Pelipper, but I don't I don't know if this team's gonna use Tailwind. Uh, I think we're probably gonna skip Tailwind on this one. Um, I think we're gonna go Hurricane for sure, and I really like Hydro Pump here. I actually am a huge fan of Hydro Pump Pelipper. A lot of people are like, oh Hydro Pump, I could never run a low accuracy move. Those people still end up running Rotom Wash though, don't they? And of course, everyone runs Scald and Rotom Wash if it was an option, but you know the only Water Attack it learns is Hydro Pump, and people still run it. And the advantages of running Hydro Pump on this thing is that uh, Pelipper is not weak. It's 95 base special attack. You know what Kingdra is? 95. Did, I, did you guys know that Pelipper had the same base special attack as Kingdra? Did you know that you could run like a big, like strong Pelipper that was just as strong as these Kingdras, which is like the best sweeper, one of the best sweepers in the game? But you didn't know that. Bet you know it now. So Pelipper is really, really strong. And the Hydro Pump makes you a much more stronger max option. But also, if you're not in max mode, Pelipper in the rain KOs uh, Incineroar, yep, unless it's vested Incineroar, which even if it is, they have to have significant vest, like significant sped up investment to be able to do it. Another thing here you're going to be see, see me do here is basically, hold on, <laughs> there we go. Um, last thing we're going to do here is we're actually not going to finish this set because we're going to talk about that move that we're going to add in a little bit. And uh, there's nothing wrong with just leaving a move set open so you can come back to it. Nothing wrong with that at all. Kingdra up next. Uh, not going to add any item yet because we're not doing that. We're going to add the Protect. Uh, we're going to add the Hurricane. Um, I think you actually do want Muddy Water. So be able to go for just a little bit of AoE. <sighs> we'll see. I don't know if I want the Muddy Water. I don't actually think I want it. I think I want the Hydro or like even a Scald. 
So that means if we don't know, we leave it blank. And again, this is how I like to build my own personal teams. Last move is Draco. You saw a Pelican outright eat a Seagull. I believe it. All right. So yeah, that's pretty much it. We're going to add a water attack here, but we don't know what yet. Whimsicott. Uh, I, I'm a huge fan of running Protect on Whimsicott. Uh, running Protect in your Tailwind setters is like massive. Remember, the reason we're running this is to have uh, Protect, is have Tailwind on the team. I actually think that we're going to go with like uh, probably a Giga Drain set. And um, probably just the Moonblast here. How do I want Moonblast or want D-Gleam? I think I'll put the Dazzling Gleam. Because we just needed to be able to check Urshifu's a little bit better. So, yeah, I like I like these two move sets here. Um, very, very simple when Scott set, and it still works. Is there a better option for Kingdra than Choice Specs? We're not even running Choice Specs. You don't run Choice Specs, Kingdra. We're probably going to run Life Orb, if you if you needed to know. <laughs> if you needed to know, we're probably running Life Orb on, a, on the Kingdra. And the last but not least, Politoed. And so, now that we've got most of our mons, we're going to be running a very, very aggressive Politoed. I guess I'll just show you the item that I'm going to put on the Politoed, because I know that this Politoed is needing, going to be needed to be built a, a specific way. Let me make sure that my Pelipper is uh, Drizzle. Well, now. So, obviously, we want Drizzle here. Did an Emerald run and got swept by Double Team Chesto, Resto, Ice Beam, Sir King, Drill, them out. So, yeah. Uh, I think a really cool item on Politoed, if you've ever actually seen me run Politoed, I have a weird history with this Pokemon. You know, I'm... I'm Seen a lot as the Pelipper guy, but uh, all throughout like the early 2010s, I was tearing up like the singles tournament scene, like going all end up down like the West Coast, going to like different like anime conventions and land events, playing singles, and the Politoed set that I led with everything. So chat's already on top of it. It's actually Scarf. Um, so I actually think like Choice Scarf is a really really cool item on Politoed. You're not ever really gonna leave with it, but it's a great revenge kill on it. Helps check those Landos. Helps checks those in Sin. Uh, and we can actually EV train to outspeed a lot of cool things. And so basically when you switch it in, soak a little bit of damage, basically you're able to get a free win next turn because they're like, oh, I'll just finish off Politoed with this thing. And it's like, actually, I outspeed your Urshifu, bro. You're dead. Um, so I really am a big fan of Scarf Politoed. And uh, I think you have to play it very, very well. But we don't even really need it because we're going to be going with Pelipper more often than not. So Politoed's there for those choice matchups. Like if I were to be playing against a guy and I go like... Uh, I go Pelipper Kingdra, right? And they lead Venusaur Torkoal. They have the advantage. Their sun is up. If I switch out my Pelipper for my Politoed, they're probably doing in my Kingdra. I can max guard, I can protect, I can do literally whatever I want. But the next turn, even after I've reset the rain, they still think that their Venusaur is faster than my Politoed. And it's totally not. And so I'm able to take advantage of that uh, and steal and pretty much steal a free turn that a Politoed would never normally have. I usually like to talk about how, um, yeah, I would disrespect... TF out of Politoed, and most people do, and I think that this is a really cool way to make Politoed a little bit more viable, and I think Scarf's a very slept down item in this format, and it's great if played correctly. Um, 90 base special attack is not even bad, it's about the same as the Politoed and the Kingdra, and one luxury we might be able to get away with is actually being modest, which means Politoed's stronger than Kingdra. Politoed is going to be stronger than Pelipper, uh, and maybe even... Not, not, not as strong as the Gengar, but uh, you see what I mean? Uh, we're able to hit a really, really big damage threshold there. So I think that actually what we're going to do is we're probably going to put Muddy Water here. For sure. And uh, I think that means I'm going to be able to put Muddy Water here. And we're going to need to run some Calcs, but we, we I want to make sure that we can KO like Hatterenes with like double Muddy Waters boosted by the rain and maybe like a Life Orb. So I'll have the Muddy Water there. Uh, we know we definitely want like an Ice Beam. Um, we can even put like a Choice Scarf Icy Wind. That's one of my absolute favorite sets. So like maybe we even cut the Ice. Maybe just go Icy Wind there. Yeah, I like that a lot because you can Icy Wind their Urshifu before uh, and have like Lucario finish off. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, I also think like Hypnosis is like really, really cool, even on like a Choice Scarf set like this. So I think Hypnosis is really good. And uh, I don't actually need to put like a last move here. I think like last move here could be something like Hydro Pump. Uh, it also gets Earth Power in this gen. I don't know how much we would really need an Earth Power. Um, it gets things like, uh, Psychic, which you would never really want. I think the last move we would probably put here, if we're going to put anything here, is probably, um, you know, we can run some calcs to see if, like, Icy, Ice Beam would be able to KO Lando, but it's probably just going to be Hydro Pump, if we're being completely honest. So, yeah. Is it worth being locked in the Icy Wind? So, basically, you do the Icy Wind play, you get the control, you KO their Maximon or whatever Mon they were, like, really, really trying to win on, and then you just switch out. Like, you do just once. And then you're, you've reset, um, and come back in with something else. So that's basically the team. Note that we haven't picked all of our moves yet. And I, I don't necessarily think that we have to pick all of our moves. We can start finishing and filling in these items uh, to start giving the team a little bit more play style, uh, give the team a little bit more identity before we start running calcs. 
And so we got the scarf over there. We got the drizzle. We got the. We're gonna use a sash on this one's cut. Uh, we're gonna use a life orb on the Kingdra. We're gonna run a fling King's Rock here. This is one of my absolute favorite sets for Pelipper. I love it a lot. Uh, Lucario is such a weird mon because it can be built so many different ways. I think there's so many Pokemon right now that are running like Will-O-Wisp that I think a Lumberry is a pretty good item for Lucario. We could also make a talk about cutting Protect for like Ice Punch and putting a Vest on there. So we'll talk about that when we're going to be running Calcs, but I like that in a lot. And remember what one of the first things people said, Gengar Lucario, weak to ground, weak to ground. Watch out, you're weak to ground. I'm just going to run an Air Balloon. Just going to run an Air Balloon. I, th I think that's a great option. No, you, you don't... You would never put a Black Sludge or a Left Eaves on Gengar. You don't care about damage reduction. I think an Air Balloon here makes a, a whole lot of sense. Um, what I can do is... You gotta start thinking of, like, the next level... I guess, like, plays uh, that you're gonna be making. So, like, I can have a board where I go Lucario Pelipper, right? And you can see for a fact that I don't have Whims on the board, so I'm not gonna be beat upping, Right? And you can be like, I can get the Lucario, I can KO that Lucario right now with a Max Quake from like a Metagross or like a Landorus or anything, right? So they're totally going to go in there because I don't have any other Pokemon on the team on purpose, it's done on purpose, that can stop that ground attack. But if I were to switch in my Gengar, right, and then go for like a Max Stream with my Pelipper who has, remember, 95 base special attack, not only do I mitigate their damage, block their Max Quake, if it's done from a... a Something like a Metagross, for example. We now have a Gengar on the board that's going to have plus one speed that can take it out. And he didn't get his max Quake boost. Do you see, like, the amount of, like, next level thinking that we're going into? People are going to be thinking, is that Gengar get beat up? It's stuff like that. You got to start thinking of when you're building your teams. So I actually think Air Balloon's a pretty cool item on here. Another cool thing about Air Balloon is, like, if I were to lead Gengar and literally any other Pokemon, the first thing that's going to be in people's minds is, I have to break that air balloon. I see it. I see it. it says it when it gets sent out. They're going to know that I have the air balloon. They're going to go out of their way to play around it. I'll need to do shit. Like, I can use that to advantage. I can uh, max guard turn one. I can, like, let's say, like, when you when you weed with... Let's, let's talk about weeds. What's going to be using Earthquake? What's going to be using Earthquake? Yeah, things like uh, Metagross can use Earthquake and, and Max Quake. That's the move they're going to want to use to hit our Gengar. But it's probably going to be Landorus, right? It's going to be Landorus, more often than not. More often than not. If Landorus wants to use Max Quake on my Gengar, they have to have a faster Pokemon than Landorus as their teammate to break their Bloom. Which, uh, they don't. Landorus is usually the fastest Pokemon. Stakataka, again, they have to have a faster Pokemon break, the, break it first, right? And uh, I can use that to my advantage. Like, I can tunnel you into the fact that you're going to have to spend two or three turns dealing with this air Bloom before you can even do the thing that you want to do. It's so annoying, and in a situation where every single turn is so important and I'm trying to win the game so early, you don't have the luxury to be breaking air balloons against this team. The only thing that could be a problem, if it was like a brutal swing uh, enabled like thing. So if it was like Tornadus, Metagross, yeah, that could be a little bit of a problem because Torn would break it. But in those situations, you know, we can go for so many different things. We could go, um, hell, we could probably just mess him up with like Politoed Kingdra if that's going to be his board right so I really do think that like uh this is a really really cool way to play it and it really makes the imprison hard to deal with for a lot of mods so it's gonna be a lot of fun awesome so we have all of our moves we have all of our items the next thing we want to start looking at is calcs we want to see how much EV investment we need on these Pokemon remember they're all set at level 50 and your EVs at level 50 are gonna be different from the EVs at level 100 how many points do we need to actually live the things that we need to live with outspeed the things we need to outspeed and deal with the Pokemon that we need to deal with. Um, I really do think that the numero uno thing you should always be checking is if your speed control is on point, and that means are you outspeeding the Pokemon that you would like to outspeed? So uh, right now, Gengar's base 110, which means it outspeeds base 100s, it outspeeds things like Kartana at 109, it speed ties things like Raichu. Those are all pretty good, but it gets undersped by like Thundies and things like that. And so since we can't even catch Thundee, which I think is a, no a good Pokemon to try and outspeed, I just want to make sure that we're still outspeeding base 100s. I don't really care about outspeeding Garchomp because Garchomp's not common and it loses the rest of our team. Um, and I don't really care about outspeeding Kartana because I don't think it's as important because Kartana has a pretty abysmal matchup versus Gengar. So as long as we're still outspeeding base 100s because they're so popular, things like Salamence, Zapdos, Charizard, those are all really popular base 100 speed mons. That means we're going to go into the damage calculator. We're going to plug Gengar in here. Where's Gengar? 
Gengar. Set that to level 50. And we're going to put like a Charizard over here. And this is just a Pokemon Showdown Damage Calculator, nothing special. So you can see if we put 252 points in the Charizard, we make it a Timid Nature. That Charizard taps out at 167. Uh, so we need to get to 168, which means we're still actually going to need to be Timid. Um, but we don't, need we don't need this number. We don't need 178. We don't need it. It's not important. We can actually cut like a lot of those points and put them wherever we want. So it looks like we only need 180, which is totally awesome. I think that's totally fine. Um, yeah, that's perfect. So we put 180 here. 180. Be sure to make those zero. So yeah, 168. 24 EVs in speed. No, no, no. You're still gonna have like a. You're still need a million EVs. Still need a 180. Uh, we still are probably gonna want to go 252, but we'll get to that in just a minute. And then we're afforded like the luxury of putting like 76 points in HP, which is only 10 points, right? It's only 10 points, but those 10 points are going to get doubled by Dynamax. So it's actually really nice. But let's start looking at some calcs. Uh, first of all, the big calc we're looking at is Tapu Fini. Do we need, like, how many, how much special attack do we need to dumpster Tapu Fini? If we even can. We might, and we might not even be able to take out the Tapu Fini with Sludge Bomb, right? So let's look at our moves. Let's look at Sludge Bomb. Might need to be, like, maxing and stuff like that. So Sludge Bomb and uh, Shadow Ball. All right, so how much damage do these do uninvested Tapu Fini? Tapu Finis are always going to be built full HP. Always, always. And uh, let's see. If they're full HP and full special D, looks like we can't do shit <laughs> if we're uninvested. So it looks like we can't do anything if they're full HP special D. So that's very similar to like what a Tapu Fini would be at, even if it was like a lower sped F Tapu Fini that had like a, a plus one from like a Calm Mind. That's roughly about half, which is totally fine. It looks like we can't even KO Tapu Fini, even if they have zero investment, which I think is fine. I don't think you actually ever needed to KO Tapu Fini. One thing we can actually do with our Gengar is make it so we can go for, um, you know, it's just Dynamax is the exact same number because Max Ooze and Max Knuckle are weaker because they're offensive boosting Max moves, if you've ever noticed that. So not that Max Ooze is really important, but remember Max Ooze gives us a plus one. So it makes it to our next one if we... Do, if we keep this calc, uh, we guarantee can KO regular Tapu Finis. And we, we can even cover Tapu Finis that have like you know, like a good number of special defense investment if we already go out of our way to get like a max uh, plus one. We can also think about maybe putting Helping Hand on another Mon or even just doing slight chip to the Tapu Fini using some of our faster Pokemon. Remember, we have things like Lucario can E-Speed, uh, Pelletoad's going to be Scarfed, Whimsicott's going to be fast. So as long as we do a little bit of chip damage to Tapu Fini, um, we're just going to be in a really, really good spot. Uh, next thing I want to look at is Metagross though. Ah, Metagress. Metagress. So let's just set this guy to level 50. So how much damage you with Shadow Ball? Max Phantasm. Look at that damage. Oh my gosh. That's a plus one Max Phantasm in Organder Gross. These guys are usually going to be built 252 HP usually, which means Max Phantasm, Max Phantasm will always get the KO on regular Metagross, but we miss it on Max Metagross, which means, again, knowing how much damage we do in these situations, uh, it leads us to knowing how much damage we need to calc the rest of our Pokemon for. Let's see how much damage we do if we had a plus one. So if we already have a uh, Sludge Bomb boost, I would take that roll any day against Max Metagross. So, like, if I can finish off something with a Max Ooze to get the plus one, this can come in and finish it off. So, it's great. If you had to give the Ultra Beast new abilities, what would you give them? I would give them Grimine ability. <laughs> but, yeah, it's uh, it doesn't get any big KOs. And that's one of the reasons why Gengar isn't built, like, I'm not running, like, a Life Orb, like, a spec set. Um, just because you need, you need so much more damage that Gengar can really put out in this format that Gengar does enough, a good enough speed tearing to be able to deal... The chip, not the, like, he, once you do a little bit of chip, Gengar can finish things off. When this is, like, uh, Shadow Ball Sludge Bomb is, like, really, really good coverage as well. So I like that. So going into Lucario, now let's start looking at some Lucario calcs. Remember, I just want to make sure we got our Gengar, uh, yep, we got our EVs right. And I really like the fact that we have a little bit of speed here. Or not H, not speed, HP. What's really cool about this is everyone's going to be doing the same calcs as well. They're going to be like, oh, man, Gengar. And they're going to... They're going to see that I have a Gengar, and they're going to come to their damage calculator mid-game and plug in a Gengar, and they're like, okay, cool. Earthquake. You know what I mean? And they're going to be like, cool, if I go, like, my 2v2, he's going to think he's fine. He's going to be like, yo, I'm so fine. He's going to think he's so fine going for that Max Quake versus our Gengar. But remember, our Gengar is a little bit different. See this calc that he thinks he's so freaking fine? He might still get it, but there's a high chance that he misses it. Do you see what I mean? You see what that, that, that value that we got by skimming some EVs from speed to put those in HP? It afforded us the luxury of throwing off our opponent's calcs, and that's super important. 
don't just click the 252 button. It's more often than not going to be very wrong. You can always cut some speed. You can always cut some special attack and put some points in some bulk to actually make it so your Pokemon live in these uh, really, really cool situations. But let's look at Lucario. So Lucario's up. And remember, Lucario has inner focus, so it's not going to be affected by Intimidate, which means all these calcs, the only things that can stop them are screens, and that's awesome. So Lucario is probably going to be built, um, I'm thinking we're going to go Adamant, but who knows? We'll just go, uh, let's start plugging in these moves. So we'll go, co we'll go Coast Combat, we'll go Meteor Mash. And again, you can't use uh, Iron Head because he doesn't get it. And we'll go Extreme Speed. And I think the last move I'm actually going to use is, I'm just going to run some Ice Punch Calcs. Let's just do that right now. See how much damage we do Lando. If, like, we can make sure that we take out Lando, like, I'm down, actually, so. So, there's the Landorus. Wrong Landorus, now. I always do that. Which is Calcifers, this one. Set it to 50, always important. Let's take the max out of there. So, like, our Hailstorm just absolutely massacres this boy. Even out of max mode, like, do you see that? Like, you see it. Like, look at that. That's actually Lando with 12 HP and defense, too. Like, that's guaranteed. That's, like, busted. If he maxes and I maxes, like, that's totally fine. Like, we actually, like, keep, like, a really, really healthy KO range there. He'll he'll get ticked out by the uh, the hail and probably lose it anyways. Yo, thank you. Extending your subscription through June. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. But, yeah, I think Ice Punch might be actually really nice to have in Lucario then. So, we're looking at this. We might want to actually take our Lucario's item. Maybe we don't want to protect. Maybe we put Assault Vest on it. Ah, not there. Well, now. Put an assault vest and put ice punch here. Which means we're actually gonna start looking at some calcs. Like, I actually think that I think being able to like have that number for Slando is like super nice. That's like really, really good. We're gonna check out some Porygon 2 calcs though. And some insane calcs. And I always I don't ever like usually clicking the um it's Porygon Z well now. So like, for example, a lot of people when they're calcing, they'll just click like one of these buttons. Don't do that. Build your own sets so you can change it. So there's that. 252, make the item the Eviolite for sure. So like, how much damage are we really mitigating by using, or by dealing with like, look for a bold one. So that's as bulky as a poor gun 2 can possibly get. So close combat doesn't even do half against that. It doesn't even do half. Uh, let's see how much damage we can do if he's at minus one from like uh, having a defense drop. So like, we can't even KO there. Like, it doesn't even do it. Max Knuckles weaker. Like. So it doesn't, yeah, it, there's, there's no way. We'd have to apply a little bit more damage to Porygon 2. So there's no way you can break it, uh, one that's that bulky. What's the Lucario item? Does Life Orb not help? Life Orb's on our Kingdra, uh, and it's actually pretty important. So yeah, I would like to use the Life Orb, but it's not like required. And also Lucario is one of those Pokemon. I think it's also, uh, this is a general rule of team building. Don't put a Life Orb on something that could potentially hold a Sash. And the reason that is, is you don't want to just tell your opponents like, hey, I don't have that item that makes sure I don't die. Like when a Weavile, for example, uses Fake Out and takes Sat and takes Life Orb damage, you're like, oh, I could just kill it. Same thing for the Lucario here. It's it's not beneficial to use uh, a Life Orb in that situation. Shuka is not actually any better because we already have the ground resists. You rarely stream on weekends. Let's make it worth your while. I appreciate it. So let's uh let's finish up checking out Lucario. We can't KO a Porygon that's like full bold, 252, 252, but um. Let's see how much we can do to, like, a regular Porygon. Like, a regular Porygon's dead. Like, just straight up, like, a regular Porygon that's at minus one is gone. Um, man, that is actually just, like, pretty not great damage. Just from a regular Porygon. Let's actually just see. Let's put the Life Orb there. Let's actually make ourselves adamant because, like, let's freaking go. That's a little bit better. Uh, and let's just put a Life Orb on it. Let's just, like, actually look and see the Life Orb. Just so we can know. See, we're still not even getting it on, like, a regular one. And that's, that's pretty not great. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think I can condone the life orb here. And we just have to know that we don't have, like, enough. You know, we just have to know that it's not enough. Uh, which is totally fine. I think that's great. Um, let's take a look at... Let's see. Let's start taking a look at how much damage we can mitigate. So we have fighting weaknesses. Let's take a look at uh, Urshifu, for example. So let's take a look at Urshifu. Actually, I'm gonna go back to that Porygon. Just give me one sec to take a look at this Porygon. I just want to check out something. I know I say don't do this, but like... Yeah, all right. I was right. Okay. Um, let's go to Urshifu. 
And we're gonna take a look at Urshifu Dark. Alright. So those, normally those guys are built like this. That's a lot. That's a lot of damage from that Urshifu Dark. So like maybe we want to put like a Chopple. I guess he Chopple. How much damage can we mitigate by going full HP? Not enough. Like at all. So like there's no, like that close combat will always dumpster us. So we just have to know that. We just have to know that always dumpsters us. Um, so I was thinking about like how much points we want to put in like bulk to be able to live, but it doesn't really look like it matters. Um, let's take a look at Incineroar. If Incineroar needs, like if we need to put a life orb to KO Incin, I will, but I don't think that we do. I don't think that we do. Yeah, I'm fine with this calc. Uh, this should be able to KO because like Incins aren't going to be running more than like they're not even, they're not running this, and I'll take that calc any day. So, like, I'm fine with that. So, we know that we want 252. I think the next thing that we actually want to take a look at is, since we know that we're going to be using 252 here, because we need this to kill the Incin, is we want to look at how much speed we actually need to outspeed common threats. So, car was a base 90 speed, which if you take a look at, like, Landorus, for example, which is probably one of the biggest Pokemon that can check Lucario, um, it's a 91. So, we can't catch Landorus. I think the one thing that we want to try and catch is Regilecki if we have a Tailwind up. I just think it's a pretty normal normal Pokemon to try and outspeed. So Regilecki, if we put him in here, is 277, but I'll plug him in for you just so you guys can see. Set that to 50. Again, all these things are different at level 50 uh, as opposed to like level 100. And make him timid. So 277. Can Lucario catch that, or is it even worth it? Another Pokemon that we could probably make sure that we want to outspeed is Luc uh, Dragapult, which we already outspeed here. So how many points would this take? If it's less than 100, I'll think about it. No, it's going to probably still require 252, which means it's not worth it at all. So we just want to basically outspeed. Let's see. Let's do some plus one calcs then. So let's go back to the base 100s, like Charizard. Actually, let's just uh, run it in Thunderous because that's a little bit better. Sorry if I'm going a little bit too fast. I'm just trying to cover a lot of things at once. So this thing is going to be ran. It's base 111 speed. So basically, we want to see if like we can catch it at plus one, which we can't, right? So it'd be really cool to be able to outspeed a neutral Thunderous if we had a plus one, or if we applied a minus one from him, right? If we applied a minus one. So basically, like we don't outspeed that yet. So we want to make sure we can catch that. And the minus one is from the E speed. Uh, turning into max strike. Perfect, and I bet if we put this back up here, and we put this up here, just in case we get a plus one for like an airstream, it's the same number, right? Putting them at a minus one and putting ourselves at a plus one, it's the same calc. So yeah, 76 speed is very, very nice. Note it's very similar to the Gengar spread. Are you starting to see a, a similar thing? A lot of these Pokemon are going to have very similar EV spreads, but we have to find these exact numbers to figure out what they are. So I think that's a great number. Uh, that's a perfect amount of speed. It can keep us still competitive with these Pokemon. Um... And all we and like once we get the airstream, we have a ton of control. And then at plus two, just to throw that out there, like um, at plus two, we're outspeeding like a lot of stuff. Like there's a like a what is it? I think Baramosa is still faster, but like we're outspeeding Dragapult. Just so you guys can see these things, we already would have outspeed Dragapult anyways. But just throw that in there it doesn't really matter. So like Dragapult's two thirteen, we still outspeed a Dragapult um, even if we're at like plus two or something from like Tailwind. So we can like ice punch it and things like that. It's pretty nice. So that means we're going to go 252, we're going to go 76, and we're for the luxury being adamant, which is super nice. And then we just get 180 points in bulk, like that's a bulky max option, I like it a lot. Does it get SD? It does, but like we don't want SD because we're running an Assault Vest. Awesome. Pelipper. Pelipper's a little bit different because it's base 65 speed, which a lot, there's a lot of Pokemon that are in the 60s, like Incineroar and Lapras are both 60, that's probably one of the most common speed tiers in the game. Titar 61, Corviknight 67. I think it might be nice to try and outspeed Corviknight just a little bit. Um, and so Pelipper, I think since we're using a King's Rock, we can't just go like full sweeper, but like we kind of have to. Like I want to see some Pelipper calc numbers. So like what do we outspeed at plus one and plus two? So pl plug Pelipper in here. And I would like to be able to get away with going with modest Pelipper. So what does Pelipper get at plus two? Remember Dragapult's 213. It'd be nice to be able to outspeed Dragapult. Looks like we can. And I think that's, there's no way that if we make this timid, we can catch Lucky. Right? We can't catch Regilecki. That's the only Pokemon that we're gaining uh, an advantage over other than Ferramosa, which is a 251. Um, so, like, you might as well just keep this thing modest and make sure we have to be Dragapult by one point. 
And all we're doing is lowering this number, going to 214, 172. So we're going to have 252, 172, and the rest in HP, which is totally awesome. Make that modest. Huh. And then we get 84. And th the thing is, these 84 here, these are throwing off people's calcs. And it's really, really important to actually find out what these exact numbers. This is what the pros do. They don't, they don't just click the button. If I were to click this button, it's wrong. That's not what we want. Don't just click that button. Make your own spreads. Blaze your own path and your own trail. And I will say that uh, we still actually want like a speed. We still want this to be zero. Um, like zero investment in attack with uh, like an attack reduce. We don't care about Fling's damage. It's not about that. Fling is actually really important here. I want to talk about why we, have, why we have Fling. People might not know what Fling King's Rock does. Basically what Fling King's Rock does is we're not using this to make King's Rock so we can flinch things uh, with like our hurricanes and our hydro pumps. We're using it to go um, like flinch into like a Porygon or like a Mimikyu, for example. Um, this is just to stop things that are like really, really aggressive, like on the first turn. So like we can fling their setup Mon, right? And to stop them from TRing. It's more TR coverage. It's one of my favorite items. Uh, you could put Tailwind here, but we already have Tailwind, so we don't really need it. Is there any reason to go for like defense or spidef or is HP always more worth? That's a great question. Um, so basically the way this is going to, the way most Pokemon are actually built, you get the same amount of investment putting points in defense and special D by putting those points in HP. Uh, I'll run a good example here. So we'll just throw like a Blissey in here. Uh, let's, let's do a different Pokemon. Let's do, um, let's look at Lucario. So let's just do a Lucario. And then we'll do the Blissey in the, on the other side. Give me one sec here. So we plug in the Lucario right here. You can see Lucario is 70, 70, and 70. Um, so those are all the same number, which means if this Dragapult, you can see it's using Shadow Ball. If we were to put 252 in here, it cuts the Shadow Ball to 57%, right? It does less, it does like roughly the same amount of damage by putting those points in HP. It's roughly the same amount, right? It's not the exact number, but what you're also doing is covering yourself on the defensive side because basically you get like 75% of the damage reduction by putting those points in HP first. So you're covering both your bases by maxing out a Pokemon that has like less HP than like a really inflated number. It's hard to explain, but I'll show you right here by going to like, let's just put, let's just put close combat on the Sucario. I want to look at this, uh, close combat. Close combat. And then uh, let's put it into a Blissey. So like a Blissey, for example, has a really like bloated HP stat. So this close combat is going to do 176%, right? If we were to put 252 points in HP, we only block it by 15%. It goes from 176 to 161. But if we were to put those same 252 points in defense, because Blissey has such a bloated HP stat, it cuts it by like a 90, 90 more percent, right? So what I'm trying to say is that every one of these numbers has points where they cap out and you start getting diminishing returns on them and for the most part like hp tends to cap out with this number right here being around 220 uh that's why you're you'll see like the event amoongus that came out a little while ago that doesn't even have full hp investment because you don't want to get diminishing returns on your hp and so uh lucario for example and pelipper for example their hp stats are very similar to their other stats and it's on, on low pokemon especially you want to max those lower hp health health pools as high as you can because remember if you're also dynamaxing you're getting double the return on your hp investment that's why that gengar was able to live uh makes so this pelipper is gonna be a much better max option and uh hopefully that answered your question but uh let's look at the next thing let's look at the next one kingdra so kingdra is a cool pokemon uh kingdra can outspeed regilecki i think remember regilecki is 177 so let's go kingdra in here Kingdra. Sorry, he's 277, if I don't know if I said that right. So let's see. Kind of have to go timid. Put that at plus two. So we can outspeed a Lucky, but I think we still have to be timid to do it. Yeah, we have to be timid. And I think that's definitely a calc that's worth doing. So I think the timid Kingdra. Now this is going to make our Pelipper a stronger Pokemon than Kingdra. And I think that's actually really worth to do. Um, Actually, before we get into that, yeah, let's just, we can run this off this Kingdra as well. I want to calc uh, how much damage Muddy Water does to Hatterene. Um, so let's just make this modest for a sec. And just put Muddy Water here. Just so I can see how much damage does to Hatterene, so we can see if it's a two-shot. 
So Hatterene, those are usually built, just 252, 252. So Muddy Water in the rain. And in doubles. So Muddy Water is going to be about 35% there, 35 to 42. And the other one would be, so let's see, low roll was the 35. And you always want to calculate these from the low roll. And then we'll be like, oh, with a life orb. 35, 42. All right, it doesn't get the KO, but it can get a double accident drop. So, like, it's worth it to still have the Muddy Water, I think. No, fuck that. I'm going, I'm going Hydro. So, yeah, Hydro's fine there. We'll take this Muddy Water off, and we'll put Hydro here. Because it's just better. It's just literally better, which will also open up um, Muddy Water to not be on this Politoed. We can probably put, like, focus, something like Focus Blast or something there. Or even, like, Flip Turn. That doesn't get it. That one's sick. Might want to be faster than Scarf Tailwind, Reggie Drago? Mm, we'll see. I don't think that I want to be faster than Scarf Tail and Reggie Drago because I can just Moon Blast the Reggie Drago, right? I can just use my Gengar or my Lucario. Um, I don't think I need to be. Fa I don't think I need to be faster than Scarf Tail and Reggie Drago. I don't. I don't think that's a calc worth doing. Cause like I can't be. <laughs> like I guess I can. We'll, we'll run it. I think that. Um, we'll see. I'll, I'll definitely look into it though. Reggie Lucky is two seventy seven, and that's the thing that we want to outspeed. So let's just uh, make sure that we do that. All right, rain. Perfect. So we just got to take some of these points out. But I'll check how fast that Reggie Drago gets. I'll check. It's definitely worth it. Like, I'm always I'm always open to check those things. All right, so the Reggie Drago. Reggie Drago. So how fast do you get? 290. That's a lot of points. That's a lot more. That's a lot more points. I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's worth it. I just don't think I would use Kingdra in that matchup. I think that's a fair way to look at it. I would just protect and hit it with my Whimsicott. That's exactly what I would do. Okay. That's good to know, though. I also think, like, Vested Lucario would be great against that thing. So, I think we're fine. I think you only need, like, 172 outspeed there, which means we can go 2v2 here and afford the luxury of the rest in HP. So, 172. So, 172 Timid. And I just want to show you, like, uh, so this is 139, which is the exact number we need. I just want to show you that even if you went 252 here, without nature, you're two points slower. And, like, we actually have to be this number to get this exact thing. Like, you need the nature, which is unfortunate because we would love to go more in special attack. But we can't. Oh, I did the wrong number. It wasn't 139, it was 138, right? 172, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I was reading wrong. Ah, 172, and then 84. I could probably trim speed points on my Nogginadel since I can't remember the last time I fought a 120 base speed mon. 120 is a still, a still actually a really good number because Inteleon and Cinderace are still those numbers. Basically, though, if like Nogginadel's in a weird spot where like I would still go with those because you want to be able to outspeed those things. It's At least the Cinderace, I think it's super important. So yeah, still uh, really important to make sure to go zero in investment so uh, in attack so you don't take big like Confusion damage or foul play damage as well. So it's a good number right there. Whimsicott. This is one of the few times in the whole game you can click this button because Whimsicott kind of has to be ran at that speed just to be able to keep up with other Whimsicotts. And even then, you're actually going to get more bang for your buck going with four in there, in my opinion. Um, I will say a lot of the times, you get a lot more bang putting... Like, so right now, let's take that out our nature. So you guys want to know a bit more about nature. So if we were to put the nature in here, note that we have a 77 base, it would give us... It would make us go from 129 to 141 that is 12 points right but if we were to take that and go in here we go from a 168 to a 184 that is 16 points right that's a lot more points that's that's four more evs and the reason that is is because natures give a 10 percent boost to whatever stat they're in so if they're 10 percent of a higher base number it's just going to be a higher number so that's why on a lot of these pokemon like Gengar, for example, has to be timid so we can hit this exact 168. Otherwise, it'd be nice to go modest. Lucario's best stat is its, uh, its best offensive stat that we're using is its attack stat. So that's why it's nice that we get a 10% boost there. Pelipper, um, you know, we're not really using it for a defense stat, but like we're putting it there as opposed to there because we get more points by putting it in a higher base. Kingdra, we talked about it. And Wimscott's a good example as well. Why not take eight points out of HP and put four in each of the defenses? It doesn't really... It, I don't really think that matters that much. I really don't think that, that that's like that's like next level min maxing to where like I'm completely fine with these, um, and like you totally could, 
But like I said, like I'm completely fine knowing my calcs, and this is just how I like to build. Uh, you might be able to make yourself a little bit more bulky on the defensive side, but like I really like the fact that this is a solid max option. This is a solid max option. This is a solid max option. And if I know, like I know for a fact that when we Dynamax, you get double your HP. So like, because these are good max options, you're getting more bang for your buck by maxing those. And especially on these low base HP mods uh, to where you're still not really even hitting the thresholds where they start getting diminishing returns. Uh, on certain Pokemon though, you definitely would take points out uh, and put them in like mixed defenses here. Like I've definitely seen people do that, but that's just not personally how I like to do it. And I think every single person builds their teams a little bit differently and I'm more comfortable with this. Last Pokemon is a Politoed. I think Politoed is going to be a little bit weird because we want to make sure we outspeed Dragapult. So let's just plug Politoed in here at, you know, while we're being plus one. That's a great question, though. Can't even spell. Politoed! And we're going to run some calcs for this guy, too. So at plus one, because we have a choice scarf, what do we outspeed? Nothing. All right. How much do we get by full speed? Huh, we can't even catch anything. I don't even know if we can catch Pult. If we can't catch Pult, it'll completely change how we're going to build this Pokemon. So we can't even catch the Pult with full investment. That's fine. I think the next thing that you normally want to catch if you can't catch Pult, we talked about the 220s being an issue, but they're not that big of an issue. I think the next big one is Thunderous at 111. So let's plug Thunderous in here. Thunderous. Can we catch Thunderous? I think we can. All right. So 179. So yeah, we go 180 again. But we also want to do a couple of things a little bit differently here. So no, if we're going to this number here, 178, we're going up to 181. Awesome. I was going to say, it should probably skip there just based off how these guys are ran. I really want to be modest and I want to see if we can actually get there by going like this. Because Polish has a higher base HP, so you want to max, sorry, higher base special attack, you want to max that first. So we need to hit this exact number. Can 252 get it or not? It does still get it. So actually, we're afforded the luxury of going modest in this situation by taking away the Timid and still outspeeding my one like that. So 120. Remember, 120 was that same number that Lucario was. And so we have to make this decision. Who do we want to be faster, Lucario or Pelipper? Uh, I think that because Lucario is so finely tuned to already be here, and we want to make Lucario as bulky as possible, and it's not as... Like, Politoed's an after effect of the team where Lucario is like a main player. Uh, Politoed's bulk doesn't matter as much as Lucario's. So it's probably better to go with the higher speed on Pelipper, since we can afford the luxury of doing it. So 244 there, 252 with nature there, and we get like 12 points in HP. Or in, in, uh, HP. 244, 252 plus, minus here, and then we get 12 points. See, we could have clicked the 252 button, right? It sees that we're scarfed. It could have seen it. It was so close. It was close, but it was wrong. It was close, but it was wrong. And it's the min-maxing effect. What comes with it? So there actually is going to be a Twitch subscriber tournament that's going up this week. It's in Discord. Be able to check that out in a couple days when it goes live. Um, Pikachu and you're gifting two tier one subs as well. Thank you. Holy moly. Thank you, my friend. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I knew you had a rough part earlier, but thank you so much for stopping by. We're building teams from scratch today. We need a last move for this Pelipper. Not Pelipper. We need a last move for this guy. We need one last move here. I don't think... I think Weather Ball could actually be kind of cool. Weather Ball could be kind of cool. Helping Hand is also a really good option. Dude, we could just go Metronome. Screech is a really cool option. Scarf Screech. I wish he got, like, Trick. Shouldn't get it. Nope. Hmm. Hope you're having a good stream. I am. I am. Yeah, I'm thinking, what do we want this last move to be? Hydro Pump and, like, I agree with the Ice Beam. I don't think Ice Beam does enough, though. Like, I guess we could actually just put Blizzard here. Well, Mal. Like, Ice Beam's cool. Focus Blast is also an option, but, like, I'll show you the numbers. Like, uh... Not, not Pelipper. Polytoad. 252 Modest. Focus Blast into, like, Tyranitar shouldn't pick up any KOs. The only reason you'd want it is Ferrothorn, probably. I mean... I mean... Alright, Earth Power, but what are, we, what are we hitting with Earth Power, though? Like, Incineroar, we already hit that. It's like, what are we hitting with Earth Power? I don't, I don't like Earth Power. We already have Hypnosis. Yeah, we have Icy Wind, Hydro Pump, Hypnosis. Um... You don't want Psychic. I think Scald's also an option. Attract. Bounce? Airstream? Airstream Toad? 
I think Helping Hand is also a really good one. But, like, the reason why you don't want Helping Hand is because we're already going to be able to do that shit, you know? Swagger could be cool. Scarf Swagger. Does it still get it? I don't know if it does. Focus Blast versus P2. You actually do more damage versus P2 with a Water Attack. Like, even Focus Blast being super effective, you'll do more damage with, like, a stabbed Hydro Pump. Bounce could be nice. I think Airstream Politoed is, like, kind of sick. Because basically... Oh, Rain Dance could be... Yeah, I'm going to use Rain Dance. That's the sauce. That's the play. Right? Am I wrong? You weed with it. They switch in their thing, and you scar... Like, so... If... if, if no, this... No, like, Rain Dance would have been cool in previous gens. It would have been cool in previous gens. But, like, they'd still be able to, like, use their Venusaur Sun the turn before. Like, you know what I mean? They'd still be able to get it off. Like, Rain Dance is cool. It is. It is cool. But I don't think it's the sauce. I don't. Still thinking. I don't think you want a Scarf Parish Song. I don't think I like that. We're not using Tackle. I got it. I got it. I got it. I figured it out. I figured it out, chat. This solves all of our problems. Ooh. Ooh, that's so sick. Just put the weakness policy on the Lucario and just fucking pop off. <laughs> yeah, I dig that. That's so cool. And then, because our Lucario is, like, super bulky, like, we can actually just, like, chill. I actually think we really want to find room for Protect on this thing now. I don't think we need Meteor Mash. As weird as it sounds, like, we don't need to hit Steel types that hard. Or not, what, what are we hitting? Rock types? I don't care about Rock types. Like, I'll close combat the Rock type. Yeah, that's, that's definitely the sauce right there. Whew, that Politoed set cooks. I dig that. I'm going to protect against policy procs. And, uh, yeah, that's the team. We outspeed. And remember, the Politoed's still faster than Lucario, um, like, normally. So, like, it's really good. So, nice. Nice. Wouldn't it make Lucario slow? You kill them. That's the thing. It's like, they're dead. It, do it doesn't matter if it makes you slow if they're dead. So, like, if I take out your Maximon turn one, and I still have one, you lose. The game is over. Also, if you kill the- if they kill Lucario, I just bring out damn Kingdra. You know, it's like, I have the rain up. Also, Polito cuts the- oh, that's such a good tech. And remember how I talked about, like, leading those things? I can switch in Pelipper, I can switch in Gengar with the Air Balloon. Like, yeah, I, I like this. That's sick. So that was pretty much it. That is how I build teams from scratch. We opened up, like, we started out- on, uh, you know, the actual Sword and Shield game, building around Gengar. Um, I went into, you know, the Maryland team builder, showing all that stuff. I went into the damage calculator. I think the last thing we actually want to work on is showing uh, our team preview to make it look like we do certain things that we don't do. So we're probably going to want, like, I'm going to surround that with that. That looks good to me. So we're uh, making it look like it's a little bit more Whimsicott, Lucario oriented. Um, while also like hiding some of our weaknesses and things like that. So yeah, I dig that. I think this is pretty good. So hopefully you guys like the stream. Thank you guys. So we had a lot of subs today. Like Magic Dab, thank you for the subs. Pika Trainer, thank you for the subs. Uh, we might do one of these a uh, little bit more often. Midian, thank you for the subs. Darth, thank you for the subs. Schmitty, thank you for the subs. Like everyone izzy thank you for the bits thank you guys hopefully you guys like this we might do this every week uh normally i'm starting to just try and play a little bit more pokemon when like i feel like it i feel that uh you know when it's it's stressful to have to play like super serious ranked ladder all the time and sometimes like for today example i just wanted to build around gengar so uh probably still timid thank you thought that i noticed that bam so yeah we still want to outspeed that lucario by one point there now it's done perfect team love to see it we'll probably stream some games with it next week and uh, I gotta spend the time getting all these mons in game. So thank you for stopping by.